What's up everybody, welcome back to the FPL channel where today we're going to be talking about my watch list from game week 1 and I'm going to be looking into my game week 2 team how I'm going to line up come game week 2 so before we get into it, if you're a new member here watch a few of my previous videos and if you like it consider hitting that subscribe button and hit the little post notification so that you don't miss any of my future videos Instagram and Twitter will be somewhere up there so you can go check it out now let's get into my watch list. So most of these watches will be promoted players and new players into the league. So yeah, something to keep an eye on. The first name that comes into my watch list, it's from the Liverpool Norwich game. Yeah, you guessed it, Timo Puki. Because he get he got into those promising positions. He got his goal. He could have had a few more assists. He, he they kept opening that Liverpool defense. And uh, I'm gonna show something now. Do that does that suggest he's fixed to proof? That's something we can discuss about, but what I'm looking for is this little run. I mean it could it could do well in that run. And another thing here is he's gonna be pivotal to Norwich's survival. If their defense stop defending like Fulham testimonials and try to support the midfield, which eventually will support the strike force to get the goals, they will stay up. Timo Puki? I think he has a 10, 10 goal season in him, 15 max, that's about it, but that's still a very good season for a promoted striker. So now moving on to the second part of my watch list, again, another forward, so you get the trend with my watch list now, most of these are forwards, because my two forwards, Wilson and Adams, they can be gone out any time, because I put most of my money in the midfield and not in the strike force and the defense second part of my switch I mean watch list is Neil Mopé from Brighton he got he got 26 minutes he got his goal they have a good fixtures ahead only only one concern starting position Brighton have six attackers or six attackers for three slots Gross Murray Locadia Trossard and Doné and this guy Mopé were are fighting for three slots Trossard was unlucky enough to start, according to Graham Potter. What does that mean for Maupay? Is he going to start ahead of Murray, ahead of Lucario, or will Antoni come in? These are some things that we haven't seen yet, and uh, I want to look into it a bit further, but he says on my watches I'll be doing regular scouting on him, because he's a good replacement for Adams when things go rough with this guy. That's something I'm keeping an eye on. And the third guy on my watch this, uh, this guy's a, lot, a little bit cheaper than most guys. Uh, it's John McGinn, so 5.5 million. The thing that I worry about him though is, true to his price, he isn't really that big of an FPL asset because of one thing. Uh, so I think I saw on a sad man Dave or something like he won back, like he made more tackles than he made more four passes, which is a bit worrying from a fantasy football asset. But could it be in penalties? That's another thing. And this bright, in this Villa's smooth little run here and I don't have any Villa assets. So if I want a Villa asset, oh, I could tell downgrade a Yosey Perez to John McGinn, which frees up one beautiful million, which I invest in the back line or in the forward line. Cause these three are untouchable. Salah, Sterling, KDB are all untouchable in my team because I want to keep that call for so, as long as possible. KDB, he will go out about at about time, but not now, not now. John McGinn, he could come in, but he's like, a little bit lower on my a little bit low on my desire list compared to the likes of Puki and Mopay. And the next one, again another striker. So you can see the trend with my watch list. I want to look at the strikers because my strike force did not deliver the last game and if they don't deliver this game I could be in cold I could be in cold feet with them right now. Diego Jota. So Diego Jota, what is with Diego Jota? So let's see. So the thing with Diego Jota is, if you look at, if you watch the Liverpool versus Wolves game, which is like a boring game, still Diego Jota got into those attacking positions, he got into those dominant positions, and he was his finishing was appalling, I will admit. But the thing is, he kept getting into those dangerous positions, one on one with the defenders, and he kept getting shots in and get getting shots. Problem, poor finishing. So my theory is, if he keeps getting shots. Eventually, one every now and then, he will get one on target. That's my theory. And uh, eventually, he will get one on target. And if he does, 
you will get a few on target. If you get a few on target, eventually the goal will come in. Uh, so that's what I'm thinking. At. And another thing here is Man United. This could be a real test for us against Wolves. And they exported last uh, Molyneux twice last season. In both occasions. This is going to be the third time we go there and under Gunnar Solskjaer. It's interesting to see what he does. Is and uh, so I'm keeping a close eye on that game. Especially from the Wolves perspective on Diego Jota. Because without defense, a long ball over the top and he's in. Unless one Bissaka nullifies it. So that's about it. For, uh, those are my four watch, main watch list players. Sebastian Hall is another one who I want to keep a good eye on because he's an easy downgrade from Callum Wilson. But West Ham after a 5 0 opening thrashing, confidence will be down. So I'm looking at, I'm looking at that a bit uh, cautiously. And now it's time for the team watch list. Team watch list is of course Man United. After a 4 0 domination against Chelsea, everybody's looking to bring Man United assets into the teams. I'm waiting one more week to see how it goes and uh, gotta say I like some of the I like really, there's some really good options in there that I really like so let's start off with a few assets that I want to talk about uh, De Gea as a goalkeeping option he's a good viable goalkeeper for Edison owners he can you can downgrade him for now 0.4 million less you can save 0.4 million in the bank and for, for me I prefer to keep it cheap so the guys that I'm looking at here Juan Basaka, Anthony Marcio Marcus Rashford, Pog Pogba is somewhere like for choice. If he plays in that deep line playmaker role, he's gonna get more assists than he's gonna get goals. For 8.5, I'm not really sure about that. I'm not really sure. So three players I'm looking at, Pogba is for choice. That's about it. I don't want to go overload. I mean, even then I can only fit two because I already have Greenwood. Like holy shit. So. One Bissaka, Taco Magnet, Bonus Point Magnet, United, if United keep clean cheese, he's gonna be in the bonus despite no attacking returns. So that's something to keep an eye on. Anthony Marcia, out of position as a striker. The thing though is he and Rash him and Rashford will, will interchange many a time, so he will not be forward 90 minutes, but he will get forward. Rashford 8.5, 8.6 now. Socha's main man, I guess. Number uh, given a new long-term contract as well, so. These three are someone I'm keeping an eye on, but there's a but. The Wolves game will be something that I'm keeping a close eye on because this is going to be the game where we are going to be tested. A clean sheet, one of them straight in. One Bissaka straight in. That's all I have to say. Because I'll, here's another thing to consider with those Man United assets. Just one thing, entire thing. We have the largest fan base in the entire FPO game. So one good game week. Those guys are gonna be in. Transferring them and Ma transferring them in non-stop. That's why Marcio and Rashford both rose on the same day. And it's likely to happen again with another good performance. So we gotta act fast when it comes to United Assets. See a glimpse. Don't wait too much. If you can fit them in, just fit them in. That's my theory on United Assets. I mean some of you might disagree with me. If you do, just let me know in the comments and we can, you know, discuss about it a bit. Why not? Now let's talk about my game week 2 team. Now that's the end of my watch list. Oh yeah, I forgot to ask. Do you have any guys on the watch list? Let me know in the comment section down below. And uh, if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. Now moving on to my game week 2 team. So it's practically the same 11 as my game week 1 team. So it's a bit boring. Only Dalaima, Lundstrom and Chi Adams. Why? Chi Adams, you... Southampton as a whole were pathetic in the last game, so that was something that I'm actually looking at. Like I'm not Shea Adams does not fill me with confidence, but what does fill me with com confidence is Lundstrom's performance against Bournemouth. But then again, Lundstrom's performance is apparently in danger because Sheffield United fans apparently said they don't play with a flat in midfield three. Luke Freeman's gonna come back in, but the thing is, Lundstrom had a good performance in the last game, so those are some dilemmas. Che Adams, I posted on Twitter somewhere earlier that his XG is something like a 0.59, but I looked further into it and one of his shots was 0.58 XG, so that totally nullifies that argument. The only argument that is there with Che Adams, Liverpool's defense, City, Chelsea, Norwich. Three teams have looked to exploit their defense and exploit it successfully. So this guy can exploit the defense as well. So why not play Che Adams? That's, a, that's an argument for Chi Adams. 
Landstrom, a good performance against Crystal Palace who are looking pretty shite at the moment. No, they're looking pretty shite. Out of position as a midfielder, creating two big chances for David McGoldrick. Oh, is, is his name David McGoldrick? Yeah, that's something to keep an eye on. So if you, I probably will go switch back to Adams if I if I were in doubt because of the security of stats. I don't want to be a one point to thirty minute cameo from Lundstrom. I'd rather have a sixty minute without nothing from T Adams. So that is basically my team. I'm bent on Salah. It's not changing because the in the European Super Cup does not change my opinion on Salah. It's just game week two. Why are you expecting a rest already? That's my theory. Now this guy, this guy's in Kofi at the moment because an easy switch to Martial can come up any given time. So that's one thing I'm keeping an eye on. But that's about it. So we've come to the end of the video. Oh yeah, one of the one of my friends pointed out that I forgot to design my bloody kid last time. I will design my kid this week. Don't. I will design my kid this week. I just haven't got to it. I'm not like a really good. That kind of a guy who likes designing kids and stuff. I just play the game. I never really noticed the kids, but yeah, I'll design the kids this weekend. Why not? And that's about it. If you like the video, consider hitting the like button so that you can see similar videos to this one. If you haven't yet, go down there, hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell so that you miss any of my future videos, and give. And that's about it. My Twitter, Instagram will be somewhere up there, so you can go follow me if you want to talk to me in general. And I'll see you guys after game week two. Hopefully, we get our first green arrows of the season. And I'll talk to you guys after game week two. Until then, peace out. Take care of yourselves. See ya.